welcome. Uh, around about now, I just give you a little talk about socially distancing, but your distance from your distance and your distance and your distance and you're all one family. I think you're okay. But if you haven't been to church recently, um, we remain seated when we sing hymns and we keep our masks on uh, to keep us all safe. I want you to admire the, the, the choir as they process. Well, actually, I want you to imagine the choir as they process because we decided not to process. So all of you can support that imaginary procession as we sing our first carol tonight. It's number 159, uh, O Come All Ye Faithful. We've got large screens at the front now, and if you're having any difficulty reading the hymns from the Book of Praise, or even finding your place in the Book of Praise, I advise you to look at the screens, and then you can sing uh, without uh, having to worry about these things. Our opening scripture reading comes from the book of the prophet Isaiah, 
the ninth chapter and reading from verses 2 to 7. The people who walked in the darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them has light shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulder. And he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually. And there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness. From this time onward and forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The prophet Isaiah saw a society that had walked in the darkness. They would come out of the darkness into a bright and wonderful light. Isaiah saw a society that had lived under the burden of oppression. The rod of the oppressor would be broken. Sweet liberty would fill the air with an unmistakably beautiful aroma. The kingdom of justice, peace, and righteousness would become a reality. Once again, good evening everyone in church and all those who may watch online later, uh, probably on Christmas or Boxing Day. So to one and all, a merry, happy, healthy Christmas. With God's help, please do everything you can to stay healthy and keep your neighbors healthy too and you know what to do. Behind this simple Christmas Eve service tonight are many dedicated people who have given their time and talent to make this worship service happen. I thank God for them and for their gifts. Our organist emeritus, David Rosebear, has kindly agreed to play for this service. Thank you, David. Now I'd like to introduce to you two sisters, Nishita and Natasha, who are going to sing for us. And Roger is going to play for them. They have been worshipping at our church for a few months, and I just happened to hear them singing in the front pew one Sunday, and I thought, we need to hear them singing again. And after they sing, Nishita and Natasha will lead us in the Christmas litany, which is that blue paper you have in your bulletin. And they will light the Christ candle. And then, insofar as it is possible, the service will proceed unannounced. Please let the bulletin and the words on the screens be your guide this evening. Thank you again, and welcome, everyone. Hi everyone, I'm Nishita and I'm Natasha and we are very grateful to Reverend Duncan for giving us this opportunity to sing here today. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, so we will begin now. The first song is 
long time ago in Bethlehem. light of the world Navidad and we all can sing it together if you know the lyrics. <laughs> Christ candle. It's the blue sheet. God has come into the world. Glory to God in the highest. This is the good news for all people. To us is born a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And the world is transformed. And things cannot remain the same. It is made new in hope, peace, joy, and love. Let us pray. 
source of light shine in our lives and in your world with your transforming power. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Thank you, Nishida and Natasha and Roger. Our opening prayer consists of a prayer of adoration that I will read, and then I will invite you to join in the confession that is printed in the bulletin. Let us pray. God of mystery and wonder, creator, Christ, and spirit, on this holy night, the angels sing your praises with great joy. Glory to you, O God. The shepherds welcome your saving love, born in a manger. Glory to you, O God. Mary and Joseph ponder your promise, cradled in their arms. Glory to you, O God. And so we come to praise you, singing with the angels, amazed with the shepherds, cradling the Christ child in our hearts. Glory to you, O God, source of light and love for all people. Hear us now as we confess together. God of grace and mercy, you give us the greatest gift of all, your Son, Jesus. But we confess we get caught up in our own gift-giving on this holy night. You offer us new life in the babe of Bethlehem, but we smile at the baby and forget the new direction he offers. Jesus was born in human flesh, but we fail to see the dignity in the human lives around us. Forgive us, O oh God, and help us cherish the meaning in your gifts of wonder in the Christ child. Amen. The angels brought glad tidings that first Christmas night. Their words still echo through the ages, do not be afraid. This very night, a Savior is born for all of us in this hurting world. Accept the forgiveness that the Christ child brings for you and for me. And may the peace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, be with you all. I invite you to pray the words uh, as we dedicate our offering, the words beginning generous and loving God. Let us pray. Generous and loving God, your gift to us in Christ Jesus still draws us to manger and opens our hearts with wonder. Bless our gifts in his name so that they may draw others to your love and the blessing we have found in the one born for us. Amen. I invite you now to listen to the words of the Christmas story as it was told by Luke in the New Testament and to join in the songs and hymns that punctuate the
the readings. Roger is going to lead us in the readings this evening. One to seven. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While, while they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn.
I'm reading Luke chapter 2, verses 8 to 14. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I bring you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace among those whom he favors.
Luke chapter 2, verses 15 to 20. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. Perhaps you're wondering how the words of the hymns get up on these screens. So I just thought I'd give you kind of very short uh, history of how this happens. Well, weeks ago, I gave Nancy the words to the hymns. Then Nancy types them and produces slides. Then those slides go to Bill. You never see him because he's up in the balcony. And Bill is controlling the production that appears in the screens. And he takes the slides that have the hymns on them, so you see the hymn words. And then he makes the slides with the Bible on them, so you see the Bible words. And then he controls the cameras that give you pictures of me or the choir or the congregation. So he's very busy up there, but he's as cool as a cucumber. So we thank you, Bill. Uh, this is all by way of saying, if any of you feel 
moved by the Holy Spirit to take part in any of these technical um, jobs that are going on in church, please um, pray about it and speak to me because it's a lot of work. And the more people we have to do it, the better. That's my Christmas message. No, it's not. Here it is. Um, <laughs> let us pray. Now may the words of my mouth and may the innermost thoughts of all our hearts together be found acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. So Luke's nativity story that we heard this evening, thanks to Roger, mainly stars angels and shepherds. And what a contrast. The rhythmic beating of a hundred thousand pairs of wings act as a kind of thunderous percussion to the, to the chorus the angels sing louder than any loudspeakers as their heavenly brightness filled the night sky. Glory to God in the highest. No wonder those shepherds were were so scared that the angels had to comfort them. Do not be afraid. And we hear these words so often in the narratives of Christmas in the Bible. Do not be afraid. Shepherds were, were mainly older men who were past their working lives. Our boys who were too young to learn trades or to take part in their family business. So mainly old men and young boys. And you can imagine them kind of shabby in layers of hand-me-down clothes, layered to keep off the chill of the cold night air. And I think, to be honest about this, they're probably just a little bit smelly because they spent day and night looking after their flocks on the hills above Bethlehem. The shepherds. And their homely appearance and their humble occupation could not be more removed from the brilliant brightness and glory of the angel chorus, the heavenly host. And yet it is precisely to human beings like these shepherds that the good news about Jesus' birth is first announced. For Jesus came for very ordinary human beings, human beings just like shepherds, human beings just like us. The good news came to shepherds and carpenters, to fishermen, and to folk from out-of-the-way villages. This good news came to the poor of Palestine. There's so much detail in our Christmas readings about the shepherds and the angels, and yet... And yet, regarding Jesus' arrival on earth, there's a distinct shortage of information. Luke, in chapter 2, gives us the essence of the Christmas story in two verses, verses 6 and 7. Here they are. While they were there in Bethlehem, the time came for Mary to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in the manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And you'll notice that the details that we've come to love about the Christmas story are not supplied by Luke at all, but have been added by storytellers uh, over the years, the stories of the ox and ass, not in Scripture. The story of the friendly or the unfriendly innkeeper, not in Scripture. So I have no compunction tonight in adding a few more details that are not in Scripture. 
some of the details we don't read about in the Bible, but we can imagine, especially if you're like me. So Joseph had come back to his hometown because the Romans, as usual, were very boring and bureaucratic and wanted everybody to go where they came from so they could make a really good database and charge them even more taxes than they were already taxing them. And people actually went, fell for this. So Joseph goes to his hometown. He's descended remotely from King David in Bethlehem is the town of King David. Now, the typical house of a typical family of people like Joseph's aunts and uncles and cousins would have been a kind of two-room structure. In one of the rooms, the family lived and ate and slept. The other room was more for provisions and animals. We might call it a stable. So when you think about it, think about a woman who needs to have a place to give birth to her baby. There's no space or privacy for Mary in the living rooms of Joseph's family, where maybe three generations share one small space. The most private quarters would have been the, the stable. And any animal occupants could be temporarily evicted, fresh straw laid down, and somewhat hygienic birth suite could be created. Now, in, in every human culture that I have studied or experienced or lived amongst, the business of delivering babies is woman's business. So I have no doubt, I have never had any doubt that Mary was attended by female assistants, whether family or otherwise. And what did we really think? Did we think that Joseph delivered his son in those days, a carpenter? No. I'm fairly sure that Joseph and most men of his uh, culture would have run a mile in the other direction as soon as Mary went into labor, and that was a time when the women would have taken over. He was probably only too happy to hand matters over to the women and hang around with his male friends and relatives until Jesus was well and truly delivered and washed and wrapped. And as happens so often in the Gospels and in the Bible, Unseen and unheard women play vital roles in Jesus' life and death. And we should think of them and give thanks for them at Christmas. So we shouldn't think of Mary and Joseph as being alone in a kind of Christmas card stable in the middle of nowhere. It was in a very busy town. And I, I doubt that anyone in that time, at that time, would ever have experienced such a thing as being alone. Jesus was born in the heart of a heaving mass of humanity and into the loving hands of women whose history has been forgotten. And if God can become one of us, then he must have been born like every one of us. And that is very good news for all of us at Christmas. I invite you, as we pray together now, to join in with a response, which is taken from one of our favorite carols, uh, Jesus, your king is born. Jesus is born in excelsis gloria. Could we do that once, David, before we start to pray? So I will say, and so we sing, and you will, say, you will sing.
Tonight, as we remember the baby lying in the manger, we pray for peace. Peace in all the places where there is anger or war or fear. Peace in all the hearts that know sorrow or stress. We pray for people who will not sleep safely tonight because of conflict in their lives and their communities, because they have no place to sleep safely. Cradle all these people and places in your love so the world may sleep in heavenly peace this night. And so we sing. Tonight, as we remember the mother Mary rocking her baby, we pray for all children born this Christmas season. Watch over mothers and fathers and grandparents, hoping for the best for their newborns. Help us create communities where every child is valued and every family has enough. May families rejoice because Christ the Savior is born for each of us and for all of us. And so we sing, Jesus, your King is born. Jesus is born. In his house is Tonight, as we remember the Father Joseph protecting his little one, we pray for all those watching over the helpless and the hopeless. Be with all those who must work tonight to keep the world safe and to care for those in need. We think of all those in our health services, all those working to protect our community and country from Omicron, all those giving out vaccinations and administering tests. Strengthen them and encourage them and protect them in the work they are doing at this time. And so we sing. Jesus, your King is born. Jesus is born. In his house is born. God of the starry heavens and the good green earth, Eternal God, God with us. Tonight, as we remember the shepherds coming in haste, the angel host hovering and singing hallelujahs, open our hearts to reach out to the Christ child, to receive the gift you give us, Emmanuel, even as we offer our love to you in his name. Bless us in the year ahead so we can share your love with all the lives that touch ours. And now in one voice we pray the prayer that Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses. We forgive those who trespass against us. 
And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power and the glory, forever and ever. And as this service draws to a close, we will sing Silent Night. We'll remember all those years when we went out to the walls and joined hands and sang together, which we will not be doing tonight. We will be singing wherever you are sitting tonight. Silent Night. Before I dismiss you with a blessing, I, I know you're all just wild to embrace each other and wish each other a Merry Christmas. And I just want to say to you, please restrict those embraces to your family gatherings here, your particular little bubbles that you're sitting in. And uh, I wish you a Merry Christmas, a blessed Christmas, and let's hope things are better in 2022. As I pronounce the benediction, I want you to think of this blessing going to all the workers tonight, workers like the shepherds, workers like carpenters, like Joseph. I want to think of this blessing going to all the women tonight who are delivering babies, the mothers and the nurses and the midwives, all who surround them. May the blessing go with them. And we think of the angel chorus and all those gathered around the world in different time zones who are blessing the birth of Jesus and praising God in their own languages, in their own settings. And the blessing goes out to them.
tonight. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest, remain, abide with all those we have spoken of, with all those we love near or far. Amen. Amen. Amen.